Hello and good morning, Discovery Learners, and welcome back to another episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It is I, Teacher Liz, here. I'm going to be your narrator today. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit under the weather. I'll be fine. I probably just ate something bad. <laughs> but you'll be hearing my voice. And on that note, we want to hear your voice. So go ahead and sign up for YouTube and leave comments on the videos below. We love to hear from you. Up next is a yoga video from Emily. So get ready to get fit. Today's yoga includes both sitting and standing poses. Please do what you can, however you can. Always remember to be safe and use your balance. All right, let's get started. Our first pose is the Lotus Pose. It says to sit up tall, cross your legs. Most of you are in a wheelchair, so you won't be able to cross your legs. But if you can cross your legs, go ahead and do that. Rest the palms of your hands on your knees. Relax and breathe. Feel the energy radiating from the palms of your hands. Our next pose is called the house, which most of you are in right now, hopefully. Um, you're going to sit up tall again. This time I've crossed my legs, so if you do want to try crossing your legs, go ahead and do that. Bring your hands above your head and bring your palms together. Relax and think up. I like this pose because it's called the pretzel. So again, sit tall, cross your legs or keep them flat on the floor, whichever you prefer. Turn your body, oh, get those muscles free. And place your palm on the floor behind you and look behind you. Stretch your back and relax. Now, do the other side. I haven't used these muscles in a long time, so it feels good to stretch. How about you? We are now in the standing position. If you're able to, stand. If not, copy my arm movement. For now, stand up tall with a mountain arms by your side, face up, and hold it for 10 seconds. Our next pose is called the moon pose. Again, stand up tall, put your arms over your head, and you're going to bend to the left like the shape of a crescent moon. Good. If you wish, you can do the other side. Our next pose is called the chair. Bring your hands up over your head. Slightly bend your knees like you're going to sit in a chair. Hold that squat for about 5 to 10 seconds. Yeah, no, squats are not my thing. The next pose is called the tree pose. Stand with your arms at your side, bring them up over your head, and lift up one leg to the other. Now hold it. Your balance as best as you can without hurting yourself or anyone else. For now, we're going to do the star pose. This is kind of also how I sleep. Start with your legs at a wide stance. Then bring your arms up and hold it. Kind of like a starfish. But yeah, this is how I sleep. 
Our last and final pose is perhaps one of the most famous yoga poses, called the warrior pose. Start with one leg in front of the other, and then, then bring both arms out, and lean forward. We are all quarantine warriors. Now for today's observances. Our first observance is Black Cat Appreciation Day. Yes, black cats. Today on August 17, we aim to dispel all myths surrounding black cats. Additionally, this day should not be confused with National Black Cat Day. Superstitions aside, cats are simply adorable, even the black ones. These feline creatures in their sleek black coats may carry an air of mystery. However, most cats do. Along with that, their ability to find mischief or avoid you equals that of tabbies, cinnamon, gingers, calicos, whites, or grays. However, one black cat fact that holds true is that they're very less likely to be adopted just like black dogs. This variety of cat gets shunned at shelters. Despite this, black cats still respond to love and attention no differently than any other feline. So let a black cat cross your path. They aren't witches. More than likely, adopting a black cat will help keep the mouse population down around the place. Expect the number of cuddles in your life to increase too. So I guess you're wondering, how do we observe Black Cat Appreciation Day? Well, if you're considering adopting a cat, maybe think of getting a black cat. Then maybe sharing your love for your newfound black cat on social media. It's up to you. I do have a black cat currently. She's old and grumpy, but still lovable nonetheless. Do you have a cat? What kind of cat do you have? Leave your answers in the comment section below. Our second observance is National Thrift Store Day. I love thrift stores. So today, get ready for some bargain shopping. Nearly every town in the USA offers a thrift shop or secondhand store, flea market, what have you. So there's no excuse not to celebrate today. A thrift store is a retail establishment that sells gently used items. Typically, charitable organizations run the stores to raise money according to the organization's stated charitable purpose. One of the more popular and well-known thrift stores is the Goodwill. So how it works is the public donates most of the items while volunteers staff the stores. And since the items are donated, prices are adjusted to a much lower cost to the buyers. Hence, the bargains! And I mean, who doesn't want to save money? And you can find many items there. You can find furniture, household goods, clothes, DVDs, books, toys, and other hidden treasures. So yeah, National Thrift Store Day. Go out and buy something and celebrate it. Our next observance is National I Love My Feet Day. Yeah, I said it, feet. Today we observe and appreciate how valuable our feet are to us. Practice good hygiene and foot care and just straight up pamper our feet. For most of us, our feet are our primary mode of transportation. They quietly and faithfully help us stand, swim, walk, run, play sports, jog, skip, and dance. Practicing good foot care is easy. Elevating your feet when you sit or relax is a good way to help reduce swelling. Stretching, walking, or having gentle foot massage aids in circulation. A warm foot bath is also helpful. Clipping your toenails or getting help to do so is another good way to take care of your feet. And most importantly, make sure you wear the correct shoe size. 75% of the adult population has feet problems because of improper shoe choices. So today, love your feet. And last but not least, our last observance is National Vanilla Custard Day. There's nothing quite so delicious as vanilla custard. Mmm, the rich creamy texture, the light and delicious vanilla flavor. It's just the perfect ending to any day. Custards are one of the most amazing desserts and have been eaten on their own, used to fill pies, even injected into donuts. Vanilla Custard Day celebrates this delicious treat. Mmm, do you like vanilla custard? Or if not vanilla, what flavor? Leave your answers in the comment section below. And now for Today in History. Today in 1903, Joseph Pulitzer donated $2 million to Columbia University. Pulitzer's gift helped create the Columbia University School of Journalism. 
which opened September 30th, 1912. Today, the school oversees the Pulitzer Prizes, an award given to those who excel in journalism, literature, and music. The prize began with a donation from Pulitzer and was first awarded in 1917. To this day, Harvard University holds a considerable lead with 124 Pulitzer Prize winners. Wow, way to go, Harvard! On this day, in 1945, the division of Korea began at the end of World War II. With the declaration of the Soviet-Japanese War, the Soviet Union occupied the north of Korea and the United States occupied the south, with the boundary between their zones being the 38th parallel. With the onset of the Cold War, negotiations between the United States and the Soviet Union failed to lead an independent and unified Korean state. In 1948, UN supervised elections were held in US occupied South only. The American backed Sigam Rae won the election while Kim Il sung was appointed the leader of North Korea. This led to an establishment of the Republic of Korea in the South Korea, which was promptly followed by the establishment of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in North Korea. The United States supported the South, the Soviet Union supported the North, and each government claimed sovereignty over the whole Korean Peninsula. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure for today is Robert De Niro, born August 17, 1943 in New York, New York. This famous American actor is well known for movies such as The Godfather, Goodfellas, or Meet the Parents. He turns 77 today. Happy birthday, Robert. Our next notable figure is Sean Penn. Born August 17, 1960 in Santa Monica, California, he is another famous American actor. He's best known for acting in movies such as Fast Times in Ridgemont High, I Am Sam, and he even lent his voice for the character Terrence in Angry Birds. He turns 60 this year. Happy birthday, Sean! Come along as we take a journey to the place of the week. This week we are going to Cambodia. The song you hear in the background is the Cambodian National Anthem. Cambodia is about one third the size of France and somewhat larger than the US state of Missouri. It is bordered to the west and northwest by Thailand, to the northeast by Laos, southeast by Vietnam, and southwest by the Gulf of Thailand. Cambodia is the only country in the world to have a building on its flag. The official name for Cambodia is Kampuchea. Cambodia also has a parliament and a king. Its capital is Phnom Penh. The official language of Cambodia is Khmer, or Cambodian. Its official religion is Buddhism. Their money is called a real, but they also use the US dollar from time to time. Cambodia's current population is 60,303,000 people. Cambodia's most popular export is rice. Cambodia could get very humid and monsoonal during the summertime and very dry and cold in the wintertime. Most of Cambodia is covered heavily by forests, and yet some parts of Cambodia is covered with rice paddies, fields for crops such as corn and tobacco. The northeastern rainforests of Cambodia, neighboring the areas of Laos and Vietnam, are known habitats for large animals such as Asian elephants, wild oxen, rhinos, and several species of deer. And let's not forget their huge population of monkeys, usually located at the Temple of Angkor Wat. The monkeys there can be very mischievous. Stay tuned all week for more facts about Cambodia. Now for the animal of the day. Today's animal is the betta fish, also known as the Siamese fighting fish. The betta fish is native to the Mekong Delta in Southeast Asia. And although the betta fish is found today naturally in Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia, it is thought to have originated from Thailand. The betta fish is very well known for its feisty temperament displayed towards other males and smaller species of fish and can often display very aggressive behavior towards any animals that it considers a threat. The betta fish is easily recognizable due to its beautiful colors displayed on its body and of course its fins. Male betta fish have very long and elaborate colored fins as a contrast to the female betta fish which fins are quite short and their colors are very dull compared to the male. Betta fish are considered carnivorous Therefore, the diet of the betta fish is meat-based. Their diet consists of eating insects, brine shrimp, 
and also larger food particles that are part of plankton in the water. Unfortunately, due to its size, bright colors, long, attractive fins, the betta fish is preyed upon by other animals. Predators of the betta fish include larger fish, cats, newts, salamanders, birds, and some humans. Although I personally would not recommend you eating a betta fish. But they are kept as a pet, and they're fairly hassle-free when housed in a small aquarium where there are only a few fish. Yes, these feisty little fishy friends may be easy to keep as a pet, but keep in mind they do tend to have a short lifespan. I personally used to have a beta fish. They are very beautiful fish. Again, mine didn't live very long, but have you ever had a beta fish? Or would you consider having one? Why don't you leave your answers in the comment section below? The plant of the day. Today's plant is the alocasia. Alocasia usually grows in tropical climates and in places such as Southeast Asia. In the United States, it's a very common house plant and one of the favorite plants to use by interior decorators. There are numerous species of alocasias. Some of the most popular ones are the big ones like the elephant ear, the speckled, the green shield, and the black stem. They don't do very well in the dark and need a lot of good lighting up inside the house and should be cared for like any other tropical plant with weekly cleaning of its leaves and frequent misting of water on its root. But you also want to keep in mind on on avoiding overwatering it because it can cause the plant to die. Wow, that's interesting. I had an alocasia, but it was fake. I've never had a real one, but I would like to have one if I ever get a garden someday. And now for the word of the day. Today's word is indigenous. It's an adjective. It means originating or occurring naturally in a particular place. Native, indigenous. Here's some fun movies to watch this week. Today is Sean Penn's birthday, so why not watch him lend his voice to Terrence in Angry Birds? Based off the popular video game, this 2016 film is rated PG with a 1 hour and 37 minute runtime, and you can find it on Hulu. Since the place of the week is Cambodia, why not have an adventure with one of the more popular video game characters to date in Laura Croft's Tomb Raider. This 2001 adventure film is rated PG-13 with an hour and 41 minute runtime. You can rent it on YouTube or purchase it on DVD and Blu-ray. Continuing our travels through Cambodia, why not take a journey with two brothers, a film about two tiger cubs making their way through life. Made in 2004, this PG film has an hour and 49 minute runtime. You can find it on Sling TV and is also available on DVD and Blu-ray. Here is today's interesting fact. Did you know one quarter of all your bones are located in your feet? It's true, there are 26 bones in each foot. That's 52 bones in both feet together. Out of a total number of 206 bones in your whole body, which is more than 25%. It may sound crazy at first, but think about it. Your feet support your weight and allow you to jump, run, and climb. Those bones and joints also allow your feet to absorb and release energy efficiently. It's one of the main reasons why humans can outrun any other animal in an endurance race. Pretty interesting, huh? All right, everyone, that's the show for today. I had fun, and I hope you did too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications when a new video is up. And again, this is Liz. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I'll see you next time.